Yo, what's going on, everybody? You already know what time it is. You're now tuned in to the latest, hottest show on Instagram Live. That is the Independent Scene, episode 115. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to everybody for, for joining and tuning in. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to be back with you on the last day of the week, which is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I hope you guys enjoy you guys' this weekend. It's going to be a... And I, I hope that you guys' this weekend is going to be dope. It's going to be amazing. Um... But today's show is gonna be dope. I have a dope in the, I have a dope artist in the building. He's really cool. He's really you know. He's also a brother of mine. Uh, shouts out to his manager Sean for you know making this happen and bringing him and bringing him to and bringing him to me. Shouts out to you, Sean. Shouts out to everybody that that's working with Sean and along with my artist that that he's got that I'm gonna be bringing on today. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen. I, it, it gives me great pleasure and an honor to welcome to episode 115 of my show, The Independent Scene, my friend and my bro. He goes by Wonder. You know what I said? That's with an R, not an E-R, but that's a that's an R. So without further ado, let's chop it up. Let's do it, y'all. <clears throat> Yo, what's good, Hancho? What's good, my man? What's good with it? <laughs> Not much, dude. Just hanging, hanging over here. What about you? Cooling, man. Cooling, man. How, how's everything, man? You know, sir. So first of all, before you, before I get started, you know, let me just welcome you to the show, man. You know, yeah. First time being on the show, you know. So, so definitely, hey, definitely got a lot to cover. You know what I mean? Hey, thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to be here. Most definitely, I'm glad you were able to come on, man, because I said this is definitely well in the making. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's been a minute, dude. I know I know we've been waiting on this one, so I'm excited we finally got it happening. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, you know, first things first, you know, introduce yourself to all the people all over the world and let them know who you are, where you call sure. from all, where you call from all that good stuff, and then we're gonna tap right into it. All right, yeah. Um, well, first off, I'm I'm an artist, hip hop artist, rapper, go by Wonder. That's W O N D R. Um, currently in North Carolina right now, um, but I've been in South Carolina chilling during most of this COVID, this COVID stuff. I've been in Charleston, um, been kind of a getaway for me, so I can kind of get to cranking on music and making more of that, um, which I've been releasing for the past two months now. Um, but yeah, man, I'm originally from North Carolina. I grew up in Raleigh, Cary area, grew up on music. I grew up on classic rock. I grew up on hip hop. I grew up on country. I mean, I listened to everything, you know, I was... I was playing guitar at a really young age and I started getting into drums. And I think that's what really got me into hip hop. I think was just like that rhythm. Um, and I've been doing it ever since and taking it seriously for probably the past two years now, a little over two years. And okay. yeah, man, just, just hustling as a career and I'm, I'm loving it. Most definitely. Well, we definitely appreciate you, man, for, you know, giving us that insight on you. And, you know, I definitely yeah. can't wait to dig into this interview, man, because I got so many questions. I got so many different things, so many different things to talk about, talk with you about, man. So the first sure. thing, first thing I want to get to before we get into the music, before we get into all the, the good stuff, I want you to talk to us a little bit about your childhood a little bit. Tell us, you know, how you grew up, you know, how was it like? How was it for you growing up as a kid? And, you know, you know, how did you? How did you make it from a kid up until this point? Like, where, how, where were the process and the levels that you had to go through to get to this particular point as it relates to growing up in childhood? So, so tell us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. Um, well, man, that's that's a crazy question. So I was I was born in New Hampshire. So I'm OG, like, from New Hampshire. Um, when I was probably eight months old, we moved overseas. I actually lived in England and Holland for probably two years each. And then um, a lot of that I don't I don't remember a whole lot of that, but, you know, I do remember bits and pieces, you know, that definitely have an impact on me now that I just kind of think about kind of nostalgic stuff. But then after living over there for four years, we moved back to North Carolina and that's when like, we just stuck and we were there for probably 14, 15 years until I went to college, obviously. Okay. Um, but yeah, growing up for me, dude, I just, I don't know. I, it's, it's wild. I was... I was really active as a kid. I was always out. I mean, I was just trying to skateboard. I was out biking, doing whatever, just getting into dumb things with my friends and just trying to really, you know, just be as active as possible. And, you know, music was always a thing, but I think music was just more of as a hobby or just something for fun, you know, mm -hmm. on the outside. 
I wasn't really thinking about it too much as a career or anything at that point. Um, but I just loved doing it. Obviously, it was a lot of fun. Uh, my dad got me into guitar when I was really young. I was, I was probably in kindergarten, I think, about the time. Because uh, my dad grew up playing guitar when he was younger. And his uncle got him into guitar. So it kind of runs a little bit in the family there. And um, so I got kind of hooked on that. I really got hooked into classic rock, like I said earlier. That was like my first like intro into music, I think was classic rock. And, you know, I remember driving around with my dad and we'd be listening to Aerosmith Dream On. And like, I'd have all the lyrics down to that when I was like, I don't know, six, seven years old. And I was just loving that shit. I just thought like the rock star lifestyle was so cool. Like mm -hmm. just what they're singing about, the sound, like everything about it was so cool to me. And, you know, I obviously got deeper. I got into, like, Led Zeppelin, Metallica, Queen. And I was watching I was watching their concerts and DVDs. And, and then I started getting into, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince and those guys and started watching their films. And, you know, that was a whole other realm of music. And that was more towards, like, middle school era. And then that's when, like, I started getting CDs for my sister and my brother because they're both older than me. My sister's five years older than me and my brother's a year older than me. Mm -hmm. And, uh... He'd be, they'd be passing me down P.D. Pablo CDs. That was probably my, that was my first rap CD I ever got was P.D. Pablo. Okay. And um, I was pretty young at the time too. You know, I, I think I was in elementary school when I started really listening to like getting into hip hop and stuff. And none of the kids that I went to school with were listening to any of that. And okay. I think it was, I, it was cool. I liked the uniqueness of it. You know, I felt like, you know, I had this thing that, you know, not really everybody else was really listening to. And it was just a cool, like, you know, thing that I had. And uh, I think secretly I always wanted to do to rap and, you know, write, write hip hop songs, but I just didn't think I could do it. Right. Um, right. You no, know, I was, I was definitely a little bit more introverted too, as a kid. So I wasn't really outspoken, you know, I was really shy um, growing up. You know, I, I only had, I only had a few, like a handful of friends that I hung out with. I probably didn't talk to girls until I was in eighth grade. Um, oh, wow. unfortunately <laughs> i was not much of a player as a kid but but i, I mean now my music that's pretty much like all i write about um on my relation my relationships with, with other women um and you know influential people in my life um sorry if i'm getting too detailed here i no, know hey, i'm kind of going listen. off on all of it it's a little bit all over the place oh trust me listen this 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 is what i this is what i this is what is this is what is you know these are one of those questions, man, that, you know, the people want to know, because even myself, like, you know, thinking back, I'm like, I really want to know more about you. So, like, yeah. that's why I'm just like, you know, these are questions I, I said that I was going to ask, because I want to know, and I'm sure people want to know. So, sure, I, sure. so I definitely appreciate you for, you know, being able to open up and, and speak on that for sure. Yeah, man. Okay, definitely. well, uh, that's, that's what's up. That's what it is. All right. So, now, slide into the music portion of it. So, you know, talk again, kind of take us back to a, a little bit on to how you started in the music business. Like, how did you get started? And, you know, what what made you say, OK, you know, this is a career that I really yeah. want. This is a career that I really want to pursue. Sure, sure. Um, So I went to school out in Tennessee. I went to a school called Belmont and they were like pretty primarily music school. I went there to study music business because I by the time I was going to college, I was like, all I want to do is music. I don't, I don't want to go to a school and just do some random like economic thing that I'm not into. Mm -hmm. And so I'm at this school and they offer this program where you can go to New York or you can go to LA mm -hmm. and study music for a semester. And I wanted to go to LA. Like that was my goal. But okay. so many kids sign up and now I wasn't the smartest kid in my class. So they, they, they pick, they favor people on that one for sure. Okay. And I ended up getting New York and I was a little bit bummed, but, you know, I was kind of stoked. I was like, you know, this is like the city of Jay-Z, you know, Biggie, right, right. these guys, Nas coming out of here. I'm like, this is going to be cool. Like, I, I need to make the most of this. And man, like the second I got to New York, I think I was like, I don't know what it was, what it, whether it was the energy or it was just so different from being in North Carolina mm -hmm. um, and being in Nashville, just like being in a city where everyone's moving so quick and you can just kind of feel the hustle. And just it was it was wild to me. And um, I ended up getting connected in the hip hop scene up there. Uh, I was staying at these dorms and there was a girl from Brooklyn and she was just singing in the lobby one day. And I was like, I really like your voice. Like we should, we should cut a record. We should just make music. I don't know, whatever. And 
we ended up just hanging out with her for a long time. And she ended up introducing us to all these people that she's, cause she's an OG from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And we, we ended up going to all these different shows and it was just crazy to see like the amount of people that were my age that were just like obsessed with hip hop and rap and just like, they'd be in these random places in the middle of Brooklyn. It'd be like a house or something in their living room would be just decked out and it'd just be drum sets it'd be guitars. Like they'd have a whole set in the living room. Mm -hmm. And do that when, once I started seeing that and just seeing the passion all these kids have for it. And I don't know, man, it hit me. And then I was like, fuck fuck doing music business man i want to do this like i want to make the music this is way cooler like like i said when i was a kid i was so active and mm -hmm. i'm still the same way like i can't sit down for too long <laughs> um i gotta be moving but um unless i'm sleeping <laughs> which i don't do a whole lot of these days <laughs> but uh <laughs> okay okay but yeah man i think i think when i went to new york i was i was probably 20 years old at that time Okay. And, you know, once I came back, that was it. I was like, I'm starting a music career. Like, let's do this shit. Like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. Um, and that's pretty much what I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's cool. That's, that's definitely. And again, you know, I definitely appreciate you for speaking on that because, you know, sure. this, is what, this is what it's about, man. I, I love to, you know, just sit back and take in and observe, you know, how, you know, people grew up and how, you know, they got it and how they got their start because this is very as they say, tactical information that, you know, people, I'm sure people that, you know, they probably never asked you, but want to mm -hmm. ask you, but just didn't know how. So, you know, sure. I'm glad that you're able to speak on that. All right. So tell us a little bit about, you know, when it comes to managing and things of that nature, what's it been like being managed by somebody, you know, mm -hmm. shouts out to your manager, Sean Leary, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> in the building, you know, so, so, yeah. what's it, so what, what, what's it been like working with him and really, you know, being able to, you know, be the artist, but also seek wise counsel and advice from him. What's that been like? Yeah, man. I mean, um, it's been awesome. I mean, it's been incredible. I I was going to make a joke, but it's probably not, not right. He just does too much for me, man. Uh, so Sean's actually my brother. He's, we grew up together. Okay. And um, we grew up playing music together. Like he was always the lead singer. I was always playing drums. It's funny because it's like we switch positions completely. Like <laughs> okay. now he's kind of in the back and like I'm doing the front thing. Um, but uh, it's been insane. I think I was I was overwhelmed for like, when I didn't have a manager. I was trying to do everything. I was trying to figure everything out alone. I didn't know mm -hmm. what I was doing. And uh, I just didn't know how to make certain jumps and certain moves in the business, mm -hmm. um, even though I studied it. The thing is, Sean is just has like that natural business like sell ability mm -hmm. just kind of in his blood and he's also 100 times smarter than me and he knows how to you know maneuver this thing a lot more than i do and he's more passionate about the business than i am mm -hmm. like i just i really i love the business it's great but i'm, I'm you know i'm 100 percent focused on the music most mm -hmm. of the time and that's really what i wanted to do i was getting too distracted by trying to do everything else and you know having a manager come in and take on those specific roles where you just don't really want to put the time into you want to take that time and put it in your music was so key man it was like the most clutch thing that could ever happen and you know the fact that we think so alike and i think that's one of the bigger things just like we we connect we're cohesive i can yell at him and we can get pissed at each other right. and he's my brother dude we've done that we've done this a million times when we were kids so right. like it's like the next day we're good like it doesn't even matter okay uh, that's that's a really you know a big benefit of having him as well and man I don't know. It's just been, it's been nuts. It's been, it's been sick and it's cool to do with family. Most definitely. Most definitely. Shouts out to, and again, shouts out to your brother, Sean. Shouts out to, you know, family. Family is everything. I got to give a special shout out real quick before I go into my next, my next question. I got to give a huge shout out to the homie and the bro, Northside Rocky. <laughs> Northside What's Rocky up, Northside? What's good, my guy? He's a you know legend. What I'm so, you know, definitely shouts out to him, bro. But, bro, I got to get you on the show, man. Just throwing that out there. But, yeah, all right. So, you do. back to you, man. Like I said, I definitely appreciate you, again, you know, for, for speaking on that and really being so open, man, and being so humble, sure. if anything, because, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of artists, man. And, you know, very, I ain't going to say all artists aren't humble, but when you, when you do find that, that, those one or two humble ones that you know are out there you know you definitely learn a lot and this is why i'm glad you're so intellectual and you're so intelligent to be able to speak on these kind of things so appreciate that. definitely kudos to you Northside, side was good 
But uh, all right, so my next thing I want to tap into, man, is you know, let's talk about these 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 projects that you've been dropping, man. Listen, let me tell you something, <laughs> man. I have I, and I you and I we had this conversation. So I remember when I asked you, you know, what you had going on, and you and you told me what you had going on, and I was just like, okay, you know. And so for so for so for me to go and look it up and just to see that the the endless EPs, I'm like, bro, like my man has been working, like, yo, like it's EP after EP after EP, and I'm like, man, look, this is this is what, and this is what, this is what it's about. So, you know, I I gotta ask, man, what was it like, man, like creating these EPs, man, and and really, in my mind, dropping bangers, bro, like you really, you really <laughs> dropped some bangers, man. So, thank you, man, thank you. What one of them? You know, one of them being Jungle Juice, a, a, a personal favorite of mine. Another one, um, I think it was Buzzing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that being one. Twenty Four was another one. Yeah. Um, and then it's a couple of more that you that you put out there that I'm just like, okay, sure. but talk to us a little bit. First of all, I gotta because I gotta ask about my favorite. You know, how did Jungle Juice come up? How did you come up with <laughs> Jungle Juice? Where did where was the original behind it? And yeah, how did you come up with that? um jungle juice was a wild record man uh the homies from nashville a couple of my couple of my buddies i went to school with kids they just hung around with in tennessee um they're called digital sauce media it's a trio okay. three dudes evan joseph um jeeves jody and um and uh why am i forgetting it's mellow okay. yeah i think it's Mellow. i don't know why i'm blanking sorry dude i'm it's blanking all right good, now it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um uh but yeah, these these three producers, man, I just, they were sending me packs and I went back to an old pack they sent me like two months prior to like actually listening to the beat. And I was on a plane, I think I was traveling for work and I just caught that beat and I was like, this thing is insane. Like, I don't know what it is, I just love this beat. Mm -hmm. And like the second I landed, I hit him up. I was like, hey man, like just put this one aside for me. Um, his name is Mello, by the way. I was right. I just remember. Okay. That. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, but I was like, put this beat aside for me, and I'm gonna write something to this. I just just give me some time because I want to like sit down and then start writing. Because for me, like, I like to be able to sit down and have mm. the mic right there when I start to write and record. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know something about it. I just think I I I flow better. I write better. I think it all kind of happens a little bit more fluently when I do that. Um, but I think like the first line i just said randomly off the top of my head i said something about jungle juice and i'm like shit like i haven't even thought about jungle juice since college or like <laughs> since parties whatever i don't know right i haven't right, thought about right. that since i was little right <laughs> and um i was like that's cool i'm gonna bring that back and i'm gonna write something about that and i'm making that record and i really fucked with it i loved it um and then we ended up putting a music video together for it which was crazy we went back out to nashville because i moved to north carolina okay. after i made that record and I was like, we need to go back to Tennessee and like do this, you know, where like where where it was all like started and mm -hmm. have the producers come out and stuff, be in the video. And mm -hmm. we filmed a whole video based off of like the Dazed and Confused movie with Matt McConaughey. It's a right, throwback right, classic right. and kind of did a whole thing off that and ended up coming out, coming out awesome. You know, everybody was sick. Everybody who came out on the set was sick. We had dancers. We had choreographers. We had makeup stylists. We had everybody. Okay. And they were just all close friends that we work with in the industry and people that were just just cool enough to come out and help us out um, and really make this thing become, you know, something real. Okay. Uh, the Jungle Juice was wild. <laughs> okay, well, you guys, you know, you heard it here first. Definitely make sure you go and check out Jungle Juice, the streaming on all platforms. Yeah. By the bro wonder, you know what I'm saying, my guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, definitely a dope track. Now, these other, again, like I said, you know, still, you know, piggybacking off of, you know, Jungle Juice, Amazing That Nature. You created a song called 24, you know, and, a, and, and of course, my personal favorite, Buzzing. So what was Buzzing? Like, how, how did you come up with the song Buzzing? Where, where did that Buzzin'. all, where did, where did that all come <laughs> from? Man, I got to think back. Because, <laughs> you know, so in that process, just kind of like to cycle what I'm exactly I'm about to talk about with Buzzing is, I went in during when COVID first started, you know, we had like the two months of shutdown, like everyone mm -hmm. was pretty much in two months of shutdown. And that's when I decided I was like, I need to make, I, I, I need to make 27 songs. And then in two months, so by the end of two months, it's July, and I have a song for each week, all the way to the end of the year that mm -hmm. I can release. 
And, you know, that process took, you know, learning how to mix and learning how to master, learning how to produce a little bit better than I was before. I, I've been producing for a while, but just not, not super, you know, hard into it. Right. And so that's what I did, but it ended up being three songs a week, usually sometimes four, if I missed a song the week prior. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think sometimes like I'm thinking back, I'm like trying to remember when I made these songs. Cause it's just like, it was such a blur. I was up at like 5 a.m. working all the way to 9, 10 p.m. at night and mm-hmm. just cranking out as much as I could because I had no, nowhere to be. There was, no, there was right. no obligations at all. Like It was just, hey, man, like you might as well take this time and make the most of it because mm-hmm. you sure as hell aren't making any money right now. You might as well just make some music and hopefully that'll do something for you at the back end. And, um, man, it was it was a blessing. I think – I think about buzzing you know buzzing was a cool record i think it was the first one that wasn't like hip-hop like it was a little bit more like r&b pop kind of like a khalid style okay. you know beat that i made and I, it was just cool because i with my beats i think the thing is to not think overthink them mm-hmm. and sometimes i like thinking about the beat i'm like i don't know if i can see myself rapping on this or singing on this but then i'm like let me just finish it because you never know and I, it was one of those beats where it's just like, let me just see what this, see what happens. Like, this sounds wild already. Like, this melody is insane. Like, let me just throw some drums on. It'll take me two minutes. Right. And it sat. It's it honestly was sick. I loved it, but it sat around for like a few weeks after because I I couldn't see myself getting on it mm-hmm. until I was like finally I was like just forced myself to write to it. And I ended up loving it and ended up becoming one of my favorite records. Honestly. <laughs> Okay. Um, the whole okay. buzzing thing, I think I was just trying to think about summer and get back in that vibe. I think being stuck in COVID, you know, kind of took away from that whole summer feeling. And I was just trying to find a way to feel that while still, you know, just being in lockdown. Okay. All right. Now, speaking of, you know, speaking of summer vibes and things of that nature. Now, when it comes to the creative process, as far as the 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 artwork that you that that these that are on your covers man i, sure. I gotta say man that these <laughs> these art covers have been amazing like, oh, thank you man. amazing man so who i mean so who was the master was it you or was it uh who was who was the mastermind <laughs> and the brains behind creating the cover art for these for these eps that you draw oh man so what i what i wanted to do was I was focusing so much time on the music and I needed to spend as much time on the music as mm-hmm. possible. I needed to find a quick, easy concept that I could just go and, you know, do these cover arts really easily. Mm-hmm. And you know, I didn't want it to, I don't want to have to go take photos. Like that process makes it so much longer. There's a lot right. more to go through with photographers. I love doing that. I think that's awesome. When you have like a nice single, you're just trying to promote that. But when mm-hmm. I'm trying to put out all these songs, I just needed it to be simple. And, I'm obsessed with cars. Like that's like a big part of my brand is racing. Okay. Uh, love racing. Um, grew up just watching NASCAR, Formula One, whatever. Just loving just driving, whatever. Go karting. I used to always go kart. It was in a league when I was in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And um, just obsessed with cars. I don't know what it is. I think I get it from my dad. He loves cars too. Uh, and I was like, I'm just gonna find all these old photos I have, like in the archives on my phone when I was like in high school and I was just taking photos of every <laughs> Lamborghini right. Ferrari I ever saw. I was like, this is sick. I, I was always taking photos. Right, right. And, um, and I had this like stockpile of them. I'm like, I'm going to cut these out. I'm going to just make them cool. Cause they're mine. I took the photo like this. I'm not stealing this from anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I'm slowly like getting more aggressive with how like the style of the cover art is going. I don't know if you kind of noticed that. I feel like I did. from I the did. first one to now, it's definitely like, it's yeah. going a little bit, I'm going a little bit harder because I think I'm having more time to really zone in my energy on making the cover art. Mm-hmm. But I'm getting a little bit better at it too, so it's making it easier to do. But YouTube is a blessing in Photoshop. Most definitely. Shouts out to YouTube, shouts out to Photoshop for sure. <laughs> all right, yeah. so, and I, all right, I appreciate that, bro. I really do. I definitely appreciate you being so open with these, with these responses, man. It definitely means a lot. Um, all right, so talk us a little bit about your process, like when it comes to creating these songs and these and putting out these albums and EPs and things of that nature. What is the what is the main message behind your music, behind your career, behind Wonder as a whole? 
what is the message that you are wanting the people to take away from your music and you know the projects that you put out what is what is that message like and what do you want people to take away from it yeah man that's that's a great question that's you know a question i'm kind of daily thinking about because i think it ch it's changed a whole lot since you know a lot that's happened in 2020 i think with all the stuff that's going on you know mm -hmm. with election with um black lives matter right with covid you know there's so many things you have to think about as an artist and how you want to project yourself and want to be seen especially moving forward um and you know stuff you say and everything you know it's important because your fans and people are watching you and they're getting a lot of that from you and mm -hmm. i don't want to i don't want to draw draw too far away from like just living that free lifestyle where i kind of do whatever i want mm -hmm. i feel like that's a, that's definitely a part of like the fact that you can do music is the freedom mm -hmm. um, and kind of showing people you know that freedom you have when you just kind of do your own shit and i think I want people to be inspired a lot by the hustle and the drive that I have for what I'm doing. Um, you know, the fact that um, you just sometimes just committing a hundred percent to what you do mm -hmm. and really putting all your effort into your passion is all you need, whether it's, you know, you have a million dollars to do it or you have zero dollars to do it. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's another thing to think about is a lot of people get caught up in thinking you need these huge budgets and, um, I've, sp I've spent plenty of money on, on all this, but that's all money I've made and lost. And now I'm at the point where I'm, I'm not even spending really anything on marketing and I'm just focusing on making the music. And I think really what's getting across to people more, more than ever is just the passion I have for this and, right. you know, the drive and really kind of spreading that, that kind of emotion towards other people and kind of giving them that, well, shit, you know, like, Right. I, I want to do something like I I, I want to start that company I wanted to start or I can do this on my own I don't need everything I don't need all this other stuff there's it's possible just to do it and it just takes putting the effort in uh, I think that's a big part of it a big part of who I am and a big part of what I want to represent and I want to represent that for everybody from all walks of life from to broke to wealthy a kid who has wealthiest parents on earth I don't want them to be you know, mooching off their parents. I want them to go out and hustle and do their shit too, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that's super important that everybody does it. Like, I think Jaden Smith is a good example. Like, everyone kind of gave him crap about, you know, being a son of Will Smith. But, right. dude, the thing is, you couldn't, he, he's still put in all this work to become mm -hmm. this huge artist. He's mm -hmm. making those songs. He's putting out the, mar he's doing the marketing. He's becoming the artist. He's doing everything on his own. And he's hustling his ass off. Or you could just be sitting there and being lazy and just taking his dad's money and doing whatever right. he wants to do. Like it didn't even, yeah. And that, that's, that's huge to me. I think just seeing everyone being able to work and put the effort in, especially you, Hancho. I'm seeing you do it a lot, dude. You're all over Instagram. And I swear my feed is a new interview every day and that shit's awesome. Hey, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Um, you know, I was, I was sharing something with you, man, because when I initially, man, when I started this process, you know, of course, you know, I, I was, I had the intent of, okay, you know, I'm just going to do maybe one or two shows and, you know, call it quits. But man, when I tell you, man, the response from the artists that I was bringing on and every single time before I would end the show, man, I would all, artists would always tell me, yo, keep going, keep pushing, you know, keep doing it because I see the vision. I see where you're trying to go. And so, you know, it's reasons like that that keeps me going. But at the same time, it's like I never thought that it would get to a point where I can literally honestly say that I finally have gotten up an episode to the point of in basically in the 100 ranking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That, you know, yeah, what is 115 right now? Yeah, you're at 115. Yeah. So, that hey. lets you, so that lets you know, bro, like I've been working hard the whole year. Like, and again, this is not to gloat or anything like that or to, you know, take away from, you know, anybody like that. But, you know, again, just for you saying what you just said, like, it really shows that, okay, I must be doing something right. You know, if, like you said, every day you're seeing content, you're seeing, you're getting to, you know, tap into, you get to, you're getting to tap into more artists and learn more about them and they, and their philosophy and their background and their music. And that, and this is, and this is the reason why I do it because, yeah, you know, we see each other at shows, we see each other at venues, things like that, but we don't really know, 
you know, what really, what's the, what their mantra is like, what their process is like, how they're, you know, how they're creating music, how they're flowing. And I'm sure there are people out there that probably want to know. So that's why I had to bring a show out here at Lightus on the platform to give people the opportunity and the ability to be like, okay, you know what? I, I was able to learn from this artist and now I know, okay, this is what I got to do, you know, for myself to be able to perfect my craft even better. So, you know, it's definitely, you know, something that I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about doing. I'm going to continue to do it for as long as I can till I can't go oh, no yeah. more. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I love that, man. I love that, dude. That's, I just love that passion, dude, that drive for what you want to do in life and just, just committing to it a hundred percent. Cause I don't know if I can do 115 episodes of this. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's crazy because a lot of people tell me, they're like, man, I don't see how you do it, but Hey man, listen, again, it's, it's constant drive, bro. It's constant drive. Yeah. All right. So, Real quickly, where where do you see yourself in the next five to ten years from now? Like, you know, uh, have you have you thought have you thought that far ahead? Or are you still in the process of think, or planning that out? No, I've definitely thought about it, man. And I obviously, as any artist, I want to be the best. I want to be doing this at the highest rank I possibly can, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to be doing it, you know, in the most independent way I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's you know, there there could be the possibility of partnering with, with labels and stuff like that but i think really trying to do it as a hundred percent independent owning a hundred percent of all my stuff mm -hmm. all my music all my all my masters all my um all my content mm -hmm. and really setting that example in that bar for other artists that are coming up and you know showing them that you don't always need to do it one specific way. And I think there's a lot of artists that are trying to do it that way, but right. obviously I want to be the biggest one doing it that way. And that's, that really is the goal, man. In five years, I just definitely want to be touring, doing world tours, just have several albums out and just really, man, focusing on music and focusing more on the business side, getting more into that, finding more brand partnerships, brands to work with, starting, starting my own companies outside of just the music and outside of cypher projects starting maybe a non-profit i'm mm -hmm. um, really trying to do do more philanthropy in the future i think that's a huge part of who we are especially as cypher projects and as wonder giving back um to the community but also to the to the hip-hop artists the, the kids that are trying to come up and do this and anybody who's really in music and then to come up i think that's a big thing uh because it's a struggle man and i've definitely felt it and, you know, if, if I was, if I, if I had the knowledge I had right now, back like five, six years ago, it would have been sick. And I, I love the opportunity to give that knowledge to kids that are younger than me and just be like, hey, man, here's the skip six year plan right here. And this is the shit you really need to know right. um, come this time. So, yeah, man, biggest artist, big in philanthropy, I'm just still doing music, man, and loving life. Most definitely, most definitely. Okay, now, talk to us a little bit about you know your performances. Now, I'm pretty sure you've been. A, I'm pretty sure you've probably been all over to. I'm pretty sure you've probably been all over the place. You know, performing on different stages and different venues. But what's <laughs> that? What's that been like? You know, just you know, like knowing that you're on your way, that you're on your way to a show and you're about to be on stage and you're really just about to yeah. go ham. Like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> what's that energy and that response like when you know you're about to kill it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think it's different for every show. Uh, it's still such a big learning process for me now. You know, I, I, I want my shows to really, really reflect, reflect the quality of my music. I don't want to just go out and, you know, yell my verses and yell the chorus or whatever. And cause that's not really my style. That's not, that's not my kind of energy that, that some artists like they, that's how they do it. And they fucking kill it. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I wish I could go out and do that sometimes too. But for me, I'm really focusing on just trying to make every piece of the show work together cohesively and everything kind of sound almost like it's, you're listening to the album, but you're really getting a live experience. And man, I, I still get nervous. I get, I get nervous before every show. I swear. That's the, that's the one thing that like, I think kills me the most. Cause like, I'm so nervous up until I get on stage and I say like the first maybe verse or a few bars and then I'm like it all goes away you forget about it mm -hmm. I'm like Dude, how do I stop <laughs> right. like overthinking this shit before I get on stage because sometimes you get in your head and I don't you say things and I'm like it doesn't even matter if you don't have a perfect set because man I don't think I've ever had one set where I've gone all the way through perfectly and 
90 percent of the time everyone's like yeah i didn't hear anything that you messed up uh so man i i love it i love the challenge of it i love the crowds it's always different every time the crowd's always so different i feel like it's it's especially for a new artist you don't have like that solid massive like 50 60 people coming out to every single show you're still kind of gaining fans at Mm -hmm. every show and so that that part's a lot of fun because you're kind of picking out people in the crowd who you can tell are going to be the fans and you're really trying to engage with those people the most so you get that one fan at a time at the show instead of trying to cover the entire crowd where you know not everyone's going to be as into it just because of their particular taste in music um so that part's a lot of fun. I think it's fun getting the crowd involved. I love that. I love getting people up on stage and just really trying to make it more of a experience. And man, it's, yeah, it's shows are badass, but it sucks that we can't do them right now. Most definitely. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's great for those to come back. Yeah, and, and, and I definitely, I definitely feel you on that. And I definitely hope we, we get past this and be able to, you know, really get back to what we're, to what we're used to you know I, I gotta just take a minute man because you know sitting back and just you know learning all of this about you man it's, it's almost like I remember the first time I can't remember exactly what song it was that I looked that I heard from you man and I instantly was drawn in automatically so oh, to yeah. me so to me this is really like a big deal it's almost like <laughs> you know, it's always like, you know, now that I've become a fan of yours and I'm just like, I'm literally sitting here on, on the inside fanning out because I'm like, yo, I literally got Wonder on the show right now. So like, Hell yeah, like, I love that, man. I like, love it. I'm literally like, <laughs> no, dude. Like, Good. I'm literally like hype right now. Like the hypeness that's in my body right now is just like, yo, I literally got my boy on the show. So like I said, I'm definitely grateful and humble that you're, you know, taking this time um, to come and chop it up with me and really, you know, explain to us what's really good. You know what I mean? Likewise, man. I feel and the I, same exact way. I'm just hyped to be on the show with you, man. Well, it's definitely, Your energy definitely, just from the minute we started talking. <laughs> yeah, and I, def, and I definitely can't wait to catch you in a show, man, because I definitely want to see you perform because I know the energy is, I know the energy is crazy and I know, you know that, and I know, and I know for a fact. There's no doubt in my mind that you bring it like nobody else brings it. So I definitely hope to see you in, hope to see you in action at some point before 2020 is over. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hope so too, man. I hope so too. All right, so now I want to get into this. All right, so now I want to kind of switch gears for a second because you know all right. we all have been affected by this pandemic, and you know what I want to know from you as an artist, man, and being in this industry. What's it been like, you know, having to, you know, sit back and take all of this in and just really like, you know, can in a sense really continue just to build and, you know, and work on your craft and really not being able to go out into the world? Like what's that process and that motor and what's that mindset been like for you? Yeah. Um, it's been interesting, man. It's definitely been a really weird thing to think about. And I I tend to forget about it sometimes, I think, because I get so sucked into the work and sucked into the music. But, man, when when COVID first hit, I felt like when the music industry and everything kind of stopped, it was kind of like a, like a weight lifted off my shoulders because I just felt like I kept being pressed by mm-hmm. all this new music and all these new artists and trying to compete with these up next people the entire time I was making music. So I'd make a song and then I'd hear another song and I'd be like, I don't like that song anymore. And I think that was really getting into my head a lot uh, before all this stuff happened. And so when it did happen and everything shut down, I just felt like I wasn't stressing anymore. I I felt like I wasn't competing with anybody. I felt like I just didn't have any obligations outside of myself and my music to think about. And, you know, my health and the people around me's health. That's like, that was it. And just making sure I stayed focused on that. And, uh, it ended up being kind of a blessing in disguise just because I was able to create all this music and learn all this new stuff about music that I knew nothing about before. Uh, I think a lot of other artists were doing the same thing. I think it was just like a big sabbatical for a lot of people just to Mm -hmm. sit back and, you know, see you're seeing all all this stuff and this crazy stuff happening. And, you know, it's, it's definitely inspiring you in different ways in terms of just like what you're writing about, what you're thinking about at the time, the kind of beats and stuff you're making. And I try to take away from that as much as possible and continue to forward myself so I can forward my team. Cause that's the biggest thing, man, is 
I'm not just doing this for myself. This is for my entire Cypher Projects team. That's Sean, that's Leon, that's AJ, that's Shay, that's Ferg, that's Connor Moy, who just tapped in a second ago. Also, yes. Also, yes. Shout out to, also, shout out to Shay and all your people tapping in. Shouts out to Shay. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, th- that's a, that's a big part of it, man. Those those guys all rely on me, just like I rely on them. And I don't wanna, I don't want to stop and just put this shit to a halt because there's a lot of things going on that I are really out of my control. I can't go stop COVID. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I just I just it gave me more of a reason to stay focused and to just really hustle as hard as I fucking could. So. Once this thing kind of slows down, I'm already hitting the road and putting out music, and I'm ready to go. Most definitely, most definitely, and we definitely are going to continue to be more tapped in with you more than ever. I know I am because, like I said, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm, I I can honestly say, you know, out of all artistry, out of all music, you know, at least from this particular point of view, you have become in my head and in my <laughs> mind my number one favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, Shit, man! I gotta I'll take that. That is, that. you know, what I'm saying you're that's def- a blessing. You're definitely, you're definitely now uh, one of those artists, man, that have made it in my. Because you know, here's the thing, you know, you know how people have, you know, the, a top ten, a top five, you know, things of that nature, a top twenty, top thirty. You're actually yeah. in that top five, so I definitely <laughs> gotta let you know you're definitely in that top. Damn, five. dude, so that's definitely yeah, that's an honor. I, yeah, I definitely got to congratulate you for making that list because I'm telling you, man, so many. Again, man, it's it's crazy because we're we're all surrounded by so many, so many different artists with so many different backgrounds and styles and versatilities, and you know, it's like every everybody has their favorites. You know what I'm saying? It's not that you know people are you know discrediting what any what any other artist got going on, but I know for me. Like, I have, again, like I have my top five, I have my top 10, I have my top 20, you know, and like I say, with you being in, in that listing, man, it, you have truly, <laughs> you have truly blown me out the water. One Damn, of dude. So definitely. I appreciate that. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Most definitely. So, I got to, so now my next thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is, you know, of course, the obvious, you know, we recently just had. You know, uh, a, a a tragedy that occurred in Wisconsin. You know, you know, a, 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 a attesting to, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter movement and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know what I want to know from you. You know, as an artist and as a as just an individual, a human being. You know, what has been your whole take on this whole thing? And just seeing, you know, get in a sense like seeing how it is for us African Americans, but also you know, knowing that. I'm pretty, cause I'm pretty sure you have friends that are African Americans. I'm sure. So what's yeah. that? So what's that like for you to experience that and to witness that and to tra- and, and you know and to see what's being transpired? Yeah, man, it's it's been heavy for a long time. And dude, when it, when it, when it all first started with George Floyd, I think that was that was one of the toughest toughest times for me, especially experiencing it and seeing it, you know, in person. I. I've watched I've watched a lot of films growing up and a lot of things that are pretty impactful when it comes to race and you know history on race and you know I'd always be pretty impacted by that just walking out of a movie theater and seeing Detroit I was like that shocked me for like a week mm-hmm. uh, but man when 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 this happened and you know it really kind of brought everything back full circle because it's been happening for a long time and I think it was just a lot of people felt like they couldn't say anything about it and all of a sudden everybody like everybody white black whatever person of color like everybody came together and started saying something especially on social media and protests I mean it was wild I'd never seen anything like it and and for me like it I felt I felt more comfortable speaking up about it and saying things because I saw everybody else doing it everyone was kind of it was kind of like a lead by example thing and it made me realize that, you know, being an artist and having this platform and having these fans and friends, family, whoever, I have a pretty big voice and I, I tend to not realize it sometimes. And so I'm setting examples for these kids that are younger than me or these people that are older than me or the people that are the same age that are following me, whatever it is. And I have to kind of be more vocal and say stuff. And I really have to kind of speak what's been on my mind for a long time, but, you know, maybe I was too scared to say it in the past, which is, you know, it's, it's unfortunate to think about, but like you said, I have, I have so many friends. 
our, our whole business is ran, it's pretty much all people of color except for one other artist. And, you know, that's a big thing we've been preaching before all this stuff happened was just making them as diverse a team as possible when it came to music videos, making it sure the cast was diverse. Came, not even just the cast, the people working behind the cameras, the people that work in styling, like females um, from wherever. It didn't matter. We just wanted it to be as diverse as possible. So we just built that example for everybody else who's in the business, who's doing this. Um, and... Man, obviously, it's it's it sucks to keep seeing this, you know, happening all the time. And you're at the I'm at the point where it's like, man, what what can you say to some of these people? Because you can't, I can't yell in someone's face and change their mind. I can't, I can't, I can't change every single person. I can't. There's some people that are just, you just can't actually change. They're kind of just stuck in their own way. And I've talked to a lot of friends about it. I made a lot of phone calls. Um, I've done some of the phone calls. I put them on my IG just so friends and fans can see, you know, what those conversations are like talking about this stuff and having those difficult questions to answer and to, and to ask. Um, and, you know, it's just a learning process. And the, the day, like I'm, I'm learning just as much as everybody else is learning. And I fortunately get to learn even in more physical, real experiences, just being in hip hop and being an artist and going to shows, going to events, working with people, being able to do interview calls like this. Um, I think it's, I have this opportunity a lot more than a lot of people do and they don't get to experience it and understand it even more and understand the other side, like hardly ever. Um, so it's just been a learning experience, man. I've been, trying to read a little bit more about the history of everything too. I've had friends kind of challenge me to do that. Um, friends challenging me to watch more movies, watch more TV and film, you know, that's predominantly black culture. And that's been pretty impactful for me. And you know, I'm just trying to take it one step at a time in terms of how I share it, um, what I speak about and how I want to speak about it. Cause I don't want to be, I'm not really an aggressor. You know, that's not really my, that's not really my style when it comes to, you know, talking about stuff like this, I try to, you know, show as much compassion and love as I possibly can. So, you know, people don't feel offended and maybe they'll be like, maybe it gives them the chance to think about it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot. And it's, I couldn't imagine being in your shoes and dealing with this. So, you know, um, I'm just trying to figure it out one step at a time. Most definitely. Well, I definitely, you know, I definitely salute you. Sarah, Sarah K. Boom, what's good? I see you in the building. What's good with you? Got to get you next also. Um, all right. So um, I, I, I definitely, man, um, I appreciate you, you know, for speaking on that because, you know, it's very, it's very difficult when you're living in a world where you would love to think that everybody gets along. What's good, Tashawn? I see you, my, my boy. I see you in, I see you in the better. What's good, homie? You know, it's, it's very difficult to, you know, to, to know that you're in a world where you feel like you're not accepted by, you know, you know, the color of your skin. And like you said, you know, I, I hope and pray that we can get past this because, you know, this is not the life that anybody should want to live, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to, you know, racial injustice and social injustice and things of that nature. There's so many different things we can go down the list on. But again, for you being so candid and open and honest about it, I definitely 1,000% appreciate you. And thank you for being humble and thank you for being honest and thank you for being open to speak on it. Um, of course. Now, appreciate you asking about it. Most definitely, we have we have someone that posed a question to you. Somebody, uh, E V V from H E V V wants to wants, yeah. wants to know what is your favorite movie. Oh, really, Ev? Um, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, man, it's tough. There's comedy. There's drama. There's like more serious stuff. Favorite movie of all time. I feel like she wants me to say Talladega Nights. So I'll say <laughs> Talladega Nights. Okay. I don't know. Okay. That's, that's tough. I definitely, you know, I, I, you know, 
pretty, pretty dope movie, so I, def, I, could def, I could definitely see why. We'll slide on the comedy side. We won't say that. That's probably not my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool beans. Cool beans. I definitely appreciate all of you guys that's, that's chiming in, that's tapping in. Definitely means a lot. Um, two other questions I got for you, man, and I'm going to try, try to get you up out of here. Um, Are you good? But my next thing I would love to know, man, is what advice – do you have for the young and up-and-coming artists? Real quickly, if you can, give us just a short, brief response to, you know, the up-and-coming artists, you know, all the, you know, singers and the rappers and the DJs, the future engineers, future producers. What advice do you have for them to keep them motivated, yeah. and to keep them going? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a big one to, to try to think of. Um, and I have a lot of advice, that's for sure. But I think the main thing I can say is really is try not to stray too far from yourself. I think I had a lot of struggle with that for a long time, especially with the music I was writing, uh, the sound I was producing. You know, I think I was competing so hard with other people and their sounds and their quality of music mm -hmm. and trying to be like them or, you know, emulate them a little too much. And I think you get, you get lost. When you do that, you get so lost. Mm -hmm. You ended up, you ended up start making stuff that you don't want to make. And then you just start overthinking everything that you're producing and you're writing. And it didn't take, and, and once I realized like people fucked with the stuff that I made completely solely on my own, Mm -hmm. That had nothing, didn't sound like anything I'd heard out. That was the stuff that people really fought with. And that was like the most me music I had made. Even though maybe I don't love that record at this moment, back then it was something that just set that, that tone and that bar that I just didn't realize. I looked past it and I kind of just assumed it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything to think of. Um, so just trying not to stray too far from who you are, I think is so key. Um, but you know, also you're you're an artist. You have an alter ego, right? Um, make sure that alter ego is still you know it's a part of you. It's a part. Right. It's it's something that maybe you want it to be or you could be. It's still a part of you, right? Most definitely. All right. So you know, and my final question, you know, of course the obvious because I got to ask, man, what's it like? You know, and and this is gonna come as as a as a random question, but I'm just you know I I want to know what's it because I'm sure you know you get this a lot, but what's it like being that sex symbol? of R and B and hip hop and things of that nature. What's 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 that what's that response like? Um, like yeah. Man, I don't know how to answer these questions, dude. <laughs> uh you know uh man, I don't know. I, I, I it's hard for me to like see it like that. Okay. You know, it's hard for me. I think I, I struggled a lot with self confidence when I was growing up. Um and I think <laughs> so somebody, somebody said, tell Evan, us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I think a big thing for me was what I like about being able to be more forward about, you know, the sexual, the more R and B side of stuff is I really get to be myself without thinking about what anybody else thinks. So I think I did a lot of that when I was growing up. I think I let a lot of people influence, you know, who I was. Like right. I said earlier, like trying to focus on yourself. I think I let, let a lot of people who like were just people I shouldn't have even known or dealt with. I shouldn't have let them get to me at all, but I let them kind of choose who I was and who I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And I lost a lot of self-confidence doing that. And I think with music and, you know, being able to write about these topics, it, you know, it builds me, it, it builds me up and I'm able to regain that confidence. And, you know, that, that's a good feeling. I really enjoy being able to do that and not feel like I have to think about, you know, what anybody else thinks, mm. uh, I don't have to fuck with anybody else's opinions about mine. And I'm not trying to be egotistical or, you know, rub it in anybody's face, but I'm just trying to, you know, show people who I am as a person and how I think and how I feel. So, yeah. Well, okay. Well, question, <laughs> well, there, well, well, ladies, for all you ladies out there, that's, you know, there's the response right there. There you have it. You know what I'm saying? 
the response as to why he is, you know, so the one and only wonder, you know what I mean? All right, <laughs> so, so my final thing, man, is there anything that you want the people to know, to be on the lookout for, to be tapped in for, to be plugged into, so that way we can be plugged in and tapped in with you? Yeah, sure. Well, just dropped a new song yesterday. It's called Call Me Up. You can find yeah. that everywhere. Uh, it's on all streaming platforms, but got another record coming out next week with the famous 3 a.m. sound from uh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, he's he's about to tear it up on this record called Ruthless. So I'm excited about that one. Comes out next Friday. Let's go. And then just every week after that, man, just stay tuned. Every Friday, I'm dropping new stuff. You can find everything on my Instagram. It's Wonder94, W O N D R 94. And yeah, man, there'll be new, plenty of new content like this, so I'm excited. Most definitely. And and, what, and finally, let the people know where they can tap in with you at all over the platform so that way they can, you know yeah. what I'm saying, follow you and tap in with you and yeah. all that good stuff. If you really want to tap in, definitely head over to my website, it's wonder94.com. I mean, you can find social media, you can find merch, you can find new songs, you can find videos, all super easy. Just head over there on wonder94.com. Most definitely, most definitely. But there you guys, there you there you guys have you heard it here first. So one other thing I gotta that I gotta throw it, I gotta throw it here real quick. Since if your manager is and, and Shay is still in here, when yeah. I, and, and from you yourself, the artist himself, when is when is Hancho J gonna be brought over to the to the to the wonder team, the wonder the wonder <laughs> the wonder side? Hey man, you need to come kick it next time we're all back in Raleigh. Come over to uh, you know, the Enter Menace Entertainment and we'll just kick it and talk and we'll we'll cut up about the podcast, see what we can do. Most definitely, man, because I definitely it's 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 so funny, man, because I've always said, you know, I'm all I'm always willing and you know, of course again passionate about working with new artists and and and, and, and really, you know, uh put in not so much trying to take away from the artist, but I'm also trying to like really pour out as much as I can to the artist because I know I know some things that, I'm, that I could probably help you guys with. You know, you, I'm pretty sure some things that you guys could probably help me with. And so I feel like it's yeah. just one of those those things where, you know, it's as they say, partnership and business. And I feel like we we both collectively can help each other. So, you know, if, if there is a way somehow, some way that I can be a part of this wonder team, I am all for it. You know, <laughs> I love it, man. I love you know it. Just Dude, let me know. Um, let's kick it. Like I said, hopefully, like I said, your manager is here, Sean. Hopefully, he he's hearing this, so he'll. he'll I'll let him know he'll, either way. Hopefully, he'll consider that him and you know him and Shay. So, like I said, we just I'm just throwing it out there just so y'all know. You know, <laughs> what I'm saying? So, but um, love it. But definitely, man. Listen, man. I I one thousand percent thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for. You know, coming on here and chopping it up with me. This has really, truly sure. been mind blowing and it's been inspiring. Um, I definitely can't wait to see what's next for you. Definitely, I support you one thousand percent. Keep doing what you're doing. You're definitely super talented, um, and I am super proud of you and all of your success. And I hope that you continue to go as high and as high as you want to go, man. And um, man. with that being said. This has been my time. This is Hancho J23 at the Independent Single Episode 115 with my boy Wonder. And um, like I say, I thank you, bro. Take care of yourself and stay safe out there, all right? Hey, man, you too. Most definitely. All right, Appreciate bro. you having me on, bro. For sure. There you guys have it. You know what I'm saying? This has been my time. With, this has been my time. I appreciate all of you guys for tapping in and tuning in. Much salute to my boy Wonder for coming for coming through and chopping it up with us on life and music and background and things of that nature. Salute to you, my guy. Um, I'm glad that you guys tuned in. If you guys want to see more episodes like this, you can go to my IGTV page right now, shortly after this, right after this um live, and you can check out more episodes like these. I got more episodes up there with with some of your favorite artists from the Carolinas that you can go and tap in with. Um, and if you guys too want to be a part of the show, feel free to DM me and I'll get you on there. Um, and we'll, and we'll, t we'll definitely chop it up. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, this has been my time. I love y'all. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Once again, peace and blessings. This is your boy, Hancho J23. And you're now, I am now tuning out. I'm now tuning out of the Independent Sync episode 115. Let's get it.